it's another day here at the comeback team studios this is the host that i hope you by now you're starting to love me this is beck lover and i have an amazing guest with me someone i'm i'm so happy to have met you guys been in freaking so many tv shows so many movies i can't even name them all but his most recent work phenomenal work the irishman he's been on shows that i've loved and watched over and over again entourage the wire ray donovan the list goes on and on i have the very talented dominic lombardozzi thanks back it's good to be here man i get extra credit for pronouncing it correctly yeah, because yeah, i look yeah, at the interview job i look at the interviews everyone's like oh my god uh, like veterans like they, vet veterans have messed it up so they avoid it bro yeah i mean it's said the way it's spelled bro it's like if you went to like second grade you should be able to say the name i, I would think so my name i don't blame anyone for butchering it that's why they call me lover Beck Lover, we got rid of the uh, Albanian last name. It's a little crazy. Where does Lover come from? The true story? Yeah. You know in the early 90s hip-hop, right? I mean, you're from the Bronx, right? That's where it started. That was the don't Mecca. Don't tell me you had Lover. No. Okay. And that's what I hope people don't think it's from. Okay. So what happened was I started wearing baggy jeans. My dad wanted to beat the shit out of me. I wanted to be a part of the hip-hop culture, man. I grew up around it. So I put on the baggy jeans. My uncle, God rest his soul, he sees me. He goes, yo, yo, Beck lover. He was like making fun of me for yeah. wearing baggy pants or whatever. He thought like, you know, they were literally falling off. And he started calling me that every time he saw me. And that was it. And the, the baggy jeans didn't last too long for a while because really, I got tired of keeping like the belt. I was like, this is crazy. So I went to like the loose Levi's. Relax fit. Relax fit Levi's yeah. So they weren't too tight So they yeah. wouldn't make Because yo Kids are brutal man Yeah So they wouldn't chop me up Now everything is tight It went to complete other way Tight Yeah It's like So tight It's like It's like Can't we just be in the middle Yeah I'm still in the middle man I, I've never wavered uh, I never went baggy And I won't Yeah it just I, I, I do what feels comfortable Then in high school I went full suit In public school man I literally wore three piece suit Every day. Everyone was like, why do you dress like that? I said, because, yo, I'm Beck Lover. Like, I started believing my own myth. <laughs> I was actually voted best dressed in high school, man. Really? I swear. Then my teacher go, why do you dress like this every day? I said, because I might meet the president by accident. I don't want to look like you. <laughs> she looked like she wanted to <laughs> That's funny, man. In any event, man, I'm so happy you're here, man. It's good to be here, man. My why first you ask me? real memory of you before you know meeting you obviously is the wire mm. what a show and i think a show that kind of comes into play with the environment we're in right yes yeah, a little bit yeah very social differences conscious. with social yeah. i mean it's it it really brought a reality to people of, of what goes on mm -hmm. sometimes when you're away from these areas these economically depressed areas you don't realize how bad it is for the people and the residents there and i feel that that show did a phenomenal job well yeah it uh it represented every small American city. You know, Baltimore was the star of that particular show. But what it represented was everything that's right and wrong in in all of the cities, especially the, the you know the inner cities, the corruption, the deceit, the drugs. You know, phenomenal show. And I mean, it really made you say, like, "Man, this is crazy." It's like literally like a war. Places like Chicago, and it's been a little crazy recently. But hopefully, we all come together and we do the right thing. But you know, we gotta we, hope. we gotta care about each other, regardless yeah. of where we live or where. I've always said to people, sometimes the, the biggest problem we might may, maybe have as a country is we're so damn big. Well, do you think what's happening now is we're taking steps backwards? Do you think we were headed that way? I don't now know, man. we're we're kind of. I, I I can't believe how divided we are right now. Yeah, it's very it's divided. very it's very depressing. Yeah, you know there was moments of hope where I saw like you know, I was very happy the first time President Obama won mm. because I said okay this this has got to be like we're we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, you know, and I guess not. I feel like I guess we didn't. You know, I, I well he came at the right time. I mean, you know, needed a change. You know that every a a a good portion of of like the country wanted that change it couldn't you know couldn't write a better script you know why i voted for him speaking of names mm. i said if this guy 
named Barack Hussein Obama can win the president, that means my kid with his crazy weird name. Mm-hmm. Literally, this is the reason why I did it. I said my crazy kid with his weird name that everyone made fun of me in school for. Mm-hmm. If that weird name guy, I don't even look at like any of the debates on this. If this weird guy could do it with that name, that was his appeal. You know, he appealed said, uh, to so many different people. Plus racial, you know, I racial, said that, that means everybody has a chance and yeah, everything. That's what it meant to me. But I got to say, I feel like we've taken some serious steps back, and you know, looking at what's going on in New York right now, it, New York's empty, man. Between the virus and all the other stuff, and again, we're not getting into the debates of. What we understand why people are upset, and we're not going that route. But it's just depressing to see us so divided. And I, I think part of the reason we're such a big country, man, that for me, I live in New York, New Jersey, maybe I live in California. They, I didn't realize what people in Baltimore were going through. That's why the work and the shows that you've done, like The Wire, are extremely important. I think they wake people's eyes up to say, I can't believe this happens in America. Yeah, well, they, David, Dave, David Simon. Uh, for everyone, he created the show. He wrote the show, along with uh, Ed Burns. Um, you know, David was uh, this. Uh, he was an investigative reporter for the Sun, uh, for the, uh, the, the, uh, the the newspaper in Baltimore. So he he you know he was in the trenches, man. And um, but I think he was way ahead of his time because a lot of that stuff we're seeing it now. You know, obviously, we saw it in the school systems with season four, uh, the the corruption, right? Um, the uh, the death of the newspaper. Everybody's on their computer. You're on their computer. He's on his computer. Everybody everybody gets their their news from the phone now. All, all, all that all that came to uh, to life. I think, in a way, we're seeing kind of. What happens because we didn't take care of these issues, the issues that you saw on the wire, right? Like, when, like we didn't resolve these neighborhoods. We didn't help these neighborhoods the way we should have. And that's everyone's guilty. It doesn't matter what party, what class, where you're from. The fact Does that- Does anybody have the answer, though? The answer it's is- It's easy to say- No, no, of course. It's easy. That, 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 that's, that's what I see a lot of when I turn the TV on. Uh, this is no good. That's no good. This is no good. This is not the way this should be. This is not the way that should be. But very rarely do you hear anybody offer uh, a suggestion, a solution. A viable one, too. A viable. A one. real plan. I don't, you, very, you, 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 you don't. You just see a lot of people complaining. And it just keeps going on. It just keeps going on. It snowballs, and then you have what we're going through right now. On, on the heels of... A pandemic. It's like back to back chaos. It's like what, what? What? What do you focus on first? Do you focus on the nation getting healthy, where people are not dying in hospitals, and then we address this? Because I, 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 I don't think uh, addressing both situations at the same time is working out too well. It, it might be actually be helping spread the virus, as they say. It clearly has. Now, Dominic, do they call you Dom for short? Yeah. What do you prefer? I prefer Dominic. I like that. Call me my full name. I'm the opposite. Because yeah. everyone butchers my name. Um let's take a let's take a let's take a trip back. Now you're you're a Bronx boy, right? You grew up in one of the most famous neighborhoods. Yeah. Arthur Avenue. Belmont section. Belmont. Arthur Avenue. Little Italy slash Little Albania. But at your time <laughs> yeah, it was definitely was, yeah. definitely was Little Italy. Yeah. But uh still a bit a great, of a melting pot actually when no, I was of course. Up. Yeah. What was it like growing up in that area in the Bronx? I mean, it was great. I mean, um, always outside, um, tons of friends, always creative, always created our own fun. Um, you, you know, later on in life, you realize you didn't have anything. Where'd you go to elementary? And you were happy. Do you know where you went to? You went to school. Yeah, I went to school. Where'd I went you go? to uh, PS two hundred five, and I went to Mont Carmel. Okay. And then from there, uh, you know, high school. Uh, Where'd you end up? I uh, went to San Raymond's. Uh, you didn't Columbus, end up? You went to Columbus uh, a little Salesian. bit too? Columbus High School was pretty crazy. But I found out we both have one friend that was just as crazy, if not more crazy than, than that entire high school. His yeah. name's Mezzo. Yeah, yeah. Crazy Mezzo. Yeah. 
You good friends with the guy? Of course. I, I, yeah, I hung out with him all the time. You know, he's one of the, the very few people I talk to. He's still holding down the Bronx right now, man. He's, he's, a, he's a great kid, man. Fearless. Yeah. Guy will fight 20 people if you Big have heart. To. Big heart. And you guys... You want, you want somebody in the foxhole, you want him in your foxhole, you know? We won't get into specifics, but yeah. you guys had a couple of rumbles you guys were together? No, no, I just we were just always cool, man. We were just cool. Reconnected recently? Yeah, that's it. I had a little bit to do with that. Yeah. Shout out to Crazy Mezzo, you crazy bastard. Miss you, buddy. Stay united. Is that where you met a few of your Albanian friends? I grew up, <laughs> I, you know, I grew up with Albanians. When I was growing up on Arthur Avenue, uh, like I told you, man, it was like a, uh, a, like a, like a little melting pot there. Everything, Esposito's, uh, Cafe Esposito. Still there. Still there. <laughs> always, um, always Albanian, Yugoslavian, ba- uh, Puerto Rican. Bosnians. Yeah. Uh, still some great restaurants in the area. Still. Great food, good shopping. That's the one thing I always remember. I always remember um, people coming from everywhere, Connecticut, New Jersey. They still do. Just to uh, buy the fish, the meat, the bread, cheese. the cheese, facts, everything, pasta, yeah, homemade, yeah, Bacardi, yeah. But it's crazy. I mean, even like when you look at like uh, the Little Italy and, and the Mahana, it's not what it used to be. It's kind of shrunk a little. bit. Everything changes. It does. Everything changes. So, the Bronx obviously had enclaves that were somewhere safer than the other. Yeah, I mean. What was it like growing up, man? I mean, what was it like going to school? Did you get into fights? Were you? I mean, listen, Columbus High me School. Person, me. From what I've what I've heard, yeah, I heard that shit was a war zone. Yeah, I heard there was rumbles in front of school. I mean, yeah. stabbings. I mean, you name it, it happened. These are some of the schools you went to. I mean, what was it like when you were there? Uh, yeah. When, when I when I started going to uh, Columbus, that's when they 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 um, they started putting the metal detectors in schools. That's when kind of yeah around that time. Because uh, I remember it being something completely new. And, um, but yeah, you know, um, things happened after school. Things happened on the bus, on the way to school, on the way home from school. A lot of different cliques, a lot of different crews. And when we say cliques, I mean, I feel like it was broken down by ethnic lines in the Bronx. It was, it was somewhat, but more, um, what Somewhat. neighborhood you belong to. Somewhat. Because I know the Albanians rolled with everybody, man. The yeah. ones that I knew. Yeah. They had, you know, and, and it's on. They, had, you know, they hang out, what, 80, what was it, 89 Park? 89, 89 Park. Bagel Den. Yeah. Shout out if you still are. They still hardly haven't been there in years. But Asta Avenue. I used to, I hate to even say this. My dad's going to kill me. But actually, I'll say it. I used to take my parents' car. I didn't even have a permit. I drive. There's no, there was no Albanians in Jersey, man. I just wanted to be down, man. Beck Lover had to get street credibility, man. They didn't go over the bridge yet. My mother's Mazda Millennia, man. <laughs> I drove into the BX with no license, man. That's some pretty yo. That's yeah. some, you gotta have balls to do that yeah. from from Jersey. And I go in there. Wait, did you grow up in Jersey? I grew up right. Now, I'm a river rat. Okay. Not a rat like you know. Yeah. River rat. That's because they have these big rats. That are, that's what they call us because these areas are economically depressed. Also, Edgewater was a was. A small industrial town with all abandoned factories. Right. It was disgusting here. Mm-hmm. Now it's Beverly Hills. But when I grew up, it was disgusting. So they called us the rats, the river rats. They are ah, those people down there because everyone was up more in Bergen County, beautiful. You know, it's one of the richest counties. We were the low lives. We were the rats. That's what they called That's us. That's what Arthur Avenue was. Uh, it was? Well, I mean, you know. The when Bronx, you compare it to the rest of the Bronx the, the, now. The, yeah. You know, it's the best um, part. <laughs> well, you know, you, if you compare uh, like Arthur Avenue to Morris Park or Throsneck, it's the night and day. No, of it's course. Completely different. But it's still better than a lot of other parts. Of, of course. course. I mean, I feel safe there when I'm down the block. Yeah, and I felt safe. I felt safe in Arthur Avenue. I felt safe growing up there. But any rumbles, man? Did you have to, did you have to throw up Dukes I, or what? I, I mean, yeah. Did it ever I, happen? I had my share, yeah. you know. I had a lot of one-on-one fights, yeah. It happens. But there's no more, there's to, no more know, one-on-one. If you look at these videos on, yeah. online, and uh, there's so, I mean, man, you just see like 300 people be a one person. Like, Yeah, it's just uh, you, you had to do what you had to do. You there know? is no more one-on-one, Dom. 
You look at you see social media, even in Walmart, you're done. You're getting <laughs> jumped by like thirty people. So you better be ready. Like you better be taking some Krav Maga type shit. Liam Neeson. Yeah. Speaking of which, man, you've ever done any of that stuff? Martial arts or boxing? No, anything? just boxing, you know, just uh train, you know, boxing like a boxing workout kind of thing. I still do it. I always love boxing. So Dom, you do you sure. do your school thing, you you do your you, you how do you get into this acting game, man? Around f- yeah, 14, 14 years old, 15 years old, they had um, an open call, which means um, anyone could show people up. People from all, all, all the boroughs were coming in and, and auditioning, and uh, at, the, at that time, there was an Italian-American playhouse. Uh, Marco Greco uh, ran it, and he was helping them cast this thing. He was help. I forgot what else he was doing with the movie, but uh, he was part of it. And um, which he, one? Do you remember? Which the, which? What were they casting for? They were casting for all all the kids' roles, just throughout different projects. Yeah, just all those all those kids' roles. Not like the, not not. They, I, I don't I don't think they were looking for uh, C, you know, um, in some of the uh, the older parts. But they were as as far as the like C's friends. Uh, for Bronxdale. For Bronxdale, that's what they were casting for. And um, it was an open call. You basically went, uh, you signed your name, you put your information, they took a Polaroid, and then they would keep calling you back. And every time you called back, there was like something else. To the point where you get to audition, because now you know what you're reading, who you're reading. And uh, if you make that final cut, then you, you go down to Tribeca and you audition for uh, Chaz. Well, anyway, for me, it was auditioning for Chaz and, and De Niro. And I auditioned and I got the part. But it just it kept dwindling. Like every time there would be, you know, okay, let's read this. And, okay, you know, so you would be there with 10 people, then 7 people, then 5 people. Until it's like you and three other people. So that you would consider kind of like your first break? Serious break? Yeah. I mean, I had no uh, ambitions to to be an actor, you know? Not for Martha Red. Not, not at that time. Was this something that you wanted to do? Your parents like, why don't you go try it? I mean... Yeah, my mom pushed me to, to go and read and... No, because it was it was it was big news in the neighborhood. You went to the deli. The guy at the deli was talking about it. You went to the bread. You went to get bread. People, you know, back then you used to shop. You used to go to five different stores, right? You didn't go just to this place A&P. for your bread. That you place for your place pasta. For your bread. This place for your pork. This place for your meat. Where you go this to Mike's? Mike's deli. Yeah, I, was, I went to Mike's. It depends. They make you wanted. Uh, they made a great sandwich. Uh, you know, depends what you wanted. I think the old man just passed away not even too long. Yeah, ago, two years ago, a year ago. I think, I think so. Yeah, they make a good sandwich, man. They're great. And that mozzarella is no joke. Yeah, it's a great market too. I can't call it mozzarella, bro. I, I gotta say mozzarella. I say mozzarella. I say mozzarella. Bro. Mozzarella. Mozzarella, bro. Yeah. Hey, you ever indulged in the Albanian food, man, on our time, you? Uh, you ever had burek at Tony and Tina's? Well, I worked in Amici's. So when I worked in the Michis, um, a lot of the uh, the waiters, the major d, the chef, he was our bae. So we would clean up before we would open the doors. We would all eat, and uh, sometimes we we had the uh, what you call it, burek. That's good. Yeah, the spinach pie. Then, then what's the, the chicken? Pie. The chicken in the can. What's that chicken? Oh, uh, forget pasteta. So, something. It's like, like that. it's like yeah. chicken tuna fish, kind of. And you with the bread. With the bread. It's not bad, bro. It's not bad at all. I got a lot Especially of those. Especially right when now. you have you know, I don't fresh really, bread. Oh no, the bread's got to be crispy. It's a nice. It's like a chicken spread. I, I love it. Chicken pate. I loved it. It's like a chicken yeah. pate, but it's in a can. Let me tell you, something, I got like thousands of those cans right now. Shit pops off. Armageddon starts. My wife knows how to bake bread. I'm gonna eat that like that. You should. Oh, if Armageddon breaks out, we're gonna eat good for about three weeks, so we run out of food. By then, hopefully, we have a plan. <laughs> hopefully, we all have a plan. <laughs> You know? So Amici's, huh? Yeah. Uh, one of my cousins is ma- was married to the guy that did the valet there for like years. I forgot his name. He was there for years when I tell you. He was one of the valet parkers. You know those valet parkers there? Yeah. On uh, 
Especially on Saturdays bit of and Fridays. A little bit of a gap in his front teeth. teeth. Okay, I forgot his Gosh, name. Yeah, I you know, I have like 3,000 cousins. You do too, probably. So you know what I mean? You've been to an Albanian wedding before. I have. Do you, am I lying? I can't remember everyone's name, bro. Oh, that's why the word cuz. Comes about, yeah. It's very important in, in, in our world. Yo, cuz, we know we're blood. We know we're family. We know we can't marry each other. So we say cuz, yo, cuz, because we can't even remember each other's names. But we know we're blood. We see each other every funeral, every wedding. Yo, cuz, yo, cuz, yo, cuz. That word's probably said. I, I wish I had a penny for every time that word is said within the Bronx, within the Albanian community. I'd be a millionaire. Now, so you get into that acting world. You're doing your thing. I mean, bro, you've been in amazing productions, bro. Seriously. I've been fortunate. I, I think, you know, there's fortune at one point, and there's, there's also a little bit of talent, my man. And I know you're humble about it. Now, you, you revealed to me that you don't really like to look at your work. No. And I had heard Johnny Depp say that once uh, on, uh, I think it was with David Letterman. He doesn't really even, I don't never look at it. I know a lot of actors do want to see. Some do, some don't. Why do you think yeah. you don't want to look at your own work? And I think, by the way, it's phenomenal. Thank you. I, I hope one day I, you do. I, no, no, I really appreciate that. Do you and, think it's um, kind of like a, a way for you to keep the art authentic? It's like these, you know, like, you know, like when a painter makes a paint, painting, some of them have different styles and different, it's like. It's just an uncomfortable feeling for me. It's just. Uh, You're looking at yourself. Yeah. I kind of like looking at myself. Yeah, I get my enjoyment <laughs> from it just from, from um, you know, reading it, watching some of the other people work when I'm working with them. You know, it, 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 when when it's a project that I'm involved in, I already got what I needed to get out of it. Whatever uh, friendships I made, or whatever um, you know, watching somebody at work and watching how they what their process is, that's what I that that's what I get out of it. I like I'm a big movie buff. I watch. I, I mean, I grew up watching tons and tons of movies. Um, but what's one of your favorite? I know there's a million of them, but but if you got to, you only get this movie and that's it. Last movie you're ever gonna be able to? And that's a crazy question. To ask somebody. And we're talking about it's there's so many different because genres. There's so many different genres, you know. Um, let's say, uh, let's say mob movie. What's your favorite mob movie? If you have to pick, I would have to say. And I've asked wise guys this too, right? Ex wise guys have been on my show. They all give me the I same don't two three answers. I don't consider The Godfather a mob movie. Okay, and I've heard this I from a lot want, of people. I want, to, I want to be very clear about that. Um. But uh, a, a mob movie, I mean, you have to go with the um, Goodfellas, Mean Streets. I love Mean Streets. Um, well, Once Upon a Time in America, man. No, everyone sleeps on that one, bro. Noodles? Yeah. That was a great movie. Great movie. A Bronx Tale. But what do you think happened to James Woods at the end of the movie? You know something? I don't even remember, bro. You don't remember it? I'm losing my like. It's Did he weird. get killed? You see the you see the garbage truck come, and then he disappears. De Niro's looking at him, and then he disappears. Ah, right okay. now, does he escape? Does he get killed? They did like a Tony Soprano ending thing. Like. Kind of. I, I I don't know. Maybe I have to revisit it. Maybe it gets explained again. I definitely want to see it because I just saw a couple clips, and my memory was like, man, I gotta. I love the whistling in that movie. I gotta see this movie again. It's been a yeah. long time. It's a great movie. It's a great. I great saw it movie. on VHS. My dad had it. I shouldn't have been seeing it as a kid, to be honest. Which maybe that's I'm a little. <laughs> but it's a rough movie. It's yeah. a very violent movie about shooting people. I mean, for its time, if you think about it now, going back, we're talking about the '80s. What do you but, think about the Deer Hunter? It's a great movie too. Yeah. With uh, when they're they're doing the Russian roulette. Russian roulette. <laughs> <laughs> With the guy, right? They're fucking going. Mao. Mao. Exactly. Mao. That shit was crazy, yeah. but that was with, uh, come on, man, this is your world. That was with uh, De Niro and uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal actor. Yeah. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Great. Great movie. <laughs> yeah. Great movie. Ah, you like that, huh? I told Al the Powell, who we had coming, man, you know how happy he was, man? I'm glad. I'm glad he was able to so, do man, it. I know we were supposed some, to do some, this yesterday. Some, oh, okay, yeah. We've interviewed some, you know, some pretty cool people, bro. But we were both. I know, very, I know. Very I, proud I, I and very. Follow, I follow the podcast, so very honored to have you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. You were a gentleman. You asked me, you called me, and um, 
And here I am. And then we found out we have some mutual, my family, friends with you. Yeah. Made it even more special for yeah. me. Made it easy. You, let's talk about your recent work and then we'll kind of backtrack too. Man, you and one of, I think, a phenomenal, which will definitely be a classic, in my opinion, uh, The Irishman. Mm. Okay. But I'm looking for you. I know you you're read the, the book. No, I have not. You should read the book. Is the book, did the person that wrote the movie, did they, were they also the person that wrote the book? No, uh, no, um, two different people, but uh, a lot of what's in the book is in this movie. It's kind of, I, I think that's why also the movie is so long because it's really, I don't, I don't think there was anything Marty, I think Steve Zalian wrote the script and there really wasn't much to take out of, uh, The, the 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 book you, you kind of needed it all to, to to put all the pieces together so uh but the book is a great read i enjoyed the book so you know if someone sees this before they see the movie they're gonna see your face obviously they're gonna go watch the movie they're gonna be well some people didn't know it was me they're gonna be what the fuck is dominic right now you played a legendary mafioso yeah okay you played the who was in there? who 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 surprisingly was a big part of that documentary we were talking about before, That the one that's on Netflix now. Uh, Fat Tony Salerno. Yeah, he was a big part of it uh, towards the end. And, um, I mean, brother, they made you look like an old man. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I was you the only one really in the movie aged up. I mean, some of the other characters <sighs> were aged up. How many pounds of makeup do you wear? That, there, no, nobody that much. How many pounds of makeup? It's like you know? 23 pieces. Wow. How long did it take to put all that stuff on? Anywhere from four, four and a half to six hours. Just to put it on? Yeah, because it's different ages. There's like three different ages there. Wow. So, you know, the older, the, you know, um, the older he was, the more pieces there were with the neck and like all the stuff down here, more the eyes, the coloring, Would you get the, the spots on. No, it was just very hot. Starts sweating. Get some water build up. It was just very uncomfortable. Then they had the fat suit on. I got to a certain. <laughs> that um, sucks, bro. Yeah. I got to a certain weight. And then once you do the mold, once they do a casting of, of your of your face and everything. You have to do that also. Right. That's a pain in the ass. Then too. you can't really move away from that. Because now all those pieces that they make are, are molded for for those measurements. So if you were 230 pounds when you did the most, you got to stay 230. You were 200, you stay 200. You know, you can't. So really you were monitoring function. your weight, huh? Yeah, so I got up to about 235. Now you look like you're in pretty good shape. You work out often? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a little a, job. Yeah, I'm not. I've seen some pictures of you golfing. You golf? Yeah. I golfed yesterday, actually, yeah. I mean, are you good? Or are you just like it for I fun? I shot like an 85 yesterday. Anyway, like 82, 83, 84, 85. I say, some days I could shoot a 92. It was 92 degrees yesterday. Yeah, it was hot. How was that? You were at a, at a, at a golf event, a charity yeah. event, right? Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Pretty well. What were they raising money for? Uh, there wasn't, uh, yesterday thing wasn't a charity event. Oh, it was just a, like a yeah, gathering? Yeah, I committed to uh, playing with this person, so. You Did know, you beat him? Do, yeah. Dominic Lombardozzi, winner. With the 85 stroke. But the thing, here's the thing with golf. Why I liked it, why I picked it up. Because I always grew up playing baseball, um, football. You know, all, all, did you all play basketball? Sport. I did, but it really wasn't my game. Baseball was really more my game. Um, and then later on, in life, I went, actually when I was shooting the wire, I took up golf. Uh, during um, the second season of the wire, I really didn't have much to do. Uh, because of that particular storyline, they were on the pier, so I had a lot of downtime. But you, I still had to live in Baltimore in case you know a lot of the second unit stuff. So I picked up golf because I had a few buddies here that were playing, and I'm like, you know, well, I need to, I need to learn how to play. So I picked up the game. What I love about that game, whether I'm playing with you or three other people, deep down inside, what you're really trying to do is beat the golf course. You're, you're always striving 
to get a par. You're always striving to shoot even. You know, so you can shoot, you know, 79, 82, 98. You're far away from 72. That's that's the goal. I, I like that competitiveness. Yeah, I suck. I don't like playing sports. Just for me, it's got to be competitive. You want a challenge? Always. So, obviously, the Irishman did well. A lot of great reviews. Yeah, they really you worked well. with people that... People dream of meeting, yeah. Let alone work with some friends. Just taking yeah. a picture. Was, uh, had, now, when you say uh, you make all these friends, like you know, who, who, who name well, some I of had you? friends. I mean, um, I I had had I, had, I worked with uh, Stephen Graham already. He I, we played brothers on Boardwalk Empire. I knew I knew Ray Romano. Another another amazing amazing show, man. Yeah. And I was very sad when it ended. And I'll tell you why. Not because of the way it ended. Yeah, I was sad because I started watching that show with. A loved one of mine who passed away so when the show ended for me it was very sad because it was like that was like one of the last things we had there was like two or three shows that we started together mm -hmm. so when each when each show finally got to like its finale and it was over like the last one that we started together and just finished was homeland but boardwalk empire was the first one so that show was very special for me but i thought they did an amazing job on that show mm -hmm. steve bachemi if he ever watches this i Great. love the guy yeah he did a uh, I just I worked with Steve last summer. Actually, during this time last summer, we were working together. Still talk to him? You yeah. give him a two? Yeah. You cool with him like that? Um, I mean, I know him, yeah. They were doing, uh, after 9-11, I went to Pace in the city. Right. They were doing a charity. Pacino was there. Chaz was there. Steve right. was there. And I really, man, I didn't, oh, listen, I was 18, 19, 20. I had a different mission in life at that point, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I love you, honey. I had a different mission in life. I didn't care about nothing, man. I just wanted to go out, have fun, and you get my drift, right? Right. I used to smoke cigarettes, unfortunately. And uh, I'm outside. I'm smoking outside the, the theater where they filmed inside the actor's theater. So I wish I would have known this. If I knew Pace was good for acting, maybe I would have majored in something like that, you know? Yeah. Communications, at least. I majored in finance, but I suck at math, bro. I mean, I can't even... The I barely get, is a four, no? I barely got by. I'm smoking a cigarette outside, Steve Bachemi. Of course, I had recognized him from Independence Day, but I was dying to meet Al Pacino. So I go, hey, yo, is this Al Pacino in there, man? He goes, yeah. He goes, what am I, chop live over here? I go, no, man, I love you too, I said, but I really need to meet this guy because I got something for him because I thought in my mind. Steve is real witty. He's the man, bro. He he's was great. so down he's, to earth. He's a great guy, man. Awesome guy. I smoked a cigarette with him. Great I'm guy. like, and then I'm like, yo, this guy ended up becoming like fuck, freaking one of my, he's dude, he's one of my favorite actors. Bro. One of mine. Love him, bro. Yeah, so do I. Versatile. Funny. Serious. Believable. Authentic. Real. Yeah. Wow. Tell him I said hi. In any event, were you at that then? For Pace after 9-11? I was acting during 9-11, yeah. yeah it was the crazy, wire man. started just that, one, one year after that. You know what's crazy? Man? I was actually, when 9 11 happened, I was actually getting dressed to go do a wardrobe fitting because I was doing an episode of Third Watch. Yeah, you've been on everything. So I remember that. I, rem I remember, you know, coming out of the shower, getting dressed, and putting on, and then a plane hit. And I'm like, oh, wow, wow, that's crazy. You know, and then finishing getting ready and then another plane hit and that's when i, I said well I, I don't think i'll be going anywhere yeah, by and, that uh, point you know something yeah because then you glued to the tv so um and then you know i was there everything got hectic literally there yeah but i was underneath the buildings i didn't get to see the planes hit. i was on the e-train last stop world trade center so i was going to pace pace is only like yeah, two yeah. blocks away so uh, wow what a day for me but you know what's crazy man with everything that happened and what a horrible wait, wait were you there when they any fell down? of those buildings fell yeah, down man but i was on the brooklyn bridge thank god i was smart do you remember that gulf of smoke yes but it didn't hit me thank god no if i didn't leave when i left you so would have been in the middle of that exactly all yeah. my friends from college because like, we're right there right so imagine you're an 18 19 year old you're seeing that you're right there you're gonna want us to then watch it right yeah me, I was already depressed. I already said, man, people are dead in this thing. And I thought missiles had hit it. I didn't, because I was Did down. Did you think they were going to come down? No one thought it was going to come. No one around that area was saying, oh, they're going to fall down. We just saw fires. We're like, man, that's a crazy fire. But did How you those... know it was planes? 
uh, I knew once I finally found the person later on that I was dating at that time, I finally realized she had seen the whole thing. She've seen. I'm saying you. When you were down there, no, you were I getting on know. that train. Did you know what happened to those buildings? That's exactly what happened. Subway doors open. I'm underneath that area. Yeah. Okay. I hear screaming and yelling. As a young man, as a stupid man, right? Because when you're young, you know, sometimes human beings are funny. When we hear like, oh, look, there's danger. Let's go look. You know, animals run away from danger. We're like, oh, there's a fire. Come on, let's go check it out, Billy. Boom, boom. So whatever, the doors of the subway open, and all I hear is screaming and shouting. I don't know what the f- I don't know what's going on. My first thought was there's some type of fight or riot. Maybe someone's fighting. You know, I didn't think... Hey, these buildings are on you're fire. You're not seeing nothing. No, you're not. You're, I don't know how many feet on the ground. At least. I think it's five, five stories, right? At least in that area. So make the story short as we're going. I remember looking at one gentleman uh, and I said, do you have any idea what's going on? And he goes, no. I said, I got to go up there. He's like, yeah, me too. So we, we go. Eventually get outside. As I'm getting to surface level, you know when you're in the subway and you're about to get up? I hear another, ah, everyone's screaming again. So that, now I play back in my mind. That's when the second plane was hitting. So as I was coming above ground, and I get outside, and it's snowing. But it's like 90 degrees outside, sunny day. Yeah. I go, How the beautiful hell is day, too. It's it's beautiful. I look as, I couldn't believe it. I don't know how long I stood there. Make the story short. I get to my school. Phones ain't working. I got to get out of there. I grab my friends that are smart. I said, let's get the hell out of here. I got a bad feeling about this one. We don't know what's going on. This could be World War III. We don't even know what's going on. Let's get out of here. Get over the Brooklyn Bridge halfway through. See all the firefighters rushing in. All the police are heading into danger while we're going away from danger. That's where everybody forgets. They have forgotten. They said never forget, right? It's never said forget, but they, people have forgotten. Um, they were running... Everybody was running one direction. They were running the other. I'll never direction. forget as long as I live. I, I, I know. I, I, it's, it's weird that we're talking about this because last year during this time I was shooting a movie, <clears throat> uh, The King of Staten Island. And, and you know, it had uh, that, that even though it's not in the movie, and we never played the 9-11 angle, but it had to do with Pete Davidson, his father. His father was on that truck. Uh, do you remember that that picture in the paper of that fire truck going over the Brooklyn Bridge? Yeah, the the, the first the, the, those first yes. responders. That was his, his father was there. I forgot the engine company or the truck company. I can't I can't remember. But um, I got to talk to uh, uh, a guy who was part of that that firehouse who was also working with Judd. On the script and the whole fireman storyline of the movie, his name is uh, John Sorrentino, <clears throat> fantastic guy. Which you should get him on your show. Hey, uh, if not, just to talk about that hey. because uh, let me know. Yeah, yeah, you Please. should. He's a, he's an amazing guy, man. He's an amazing guy, and uh, and he was involved in this project, right? And, and I've always been intrigued with the whole nine eleven thing. Oh, like. Not did they come down? Were they blown down? Like, it, 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 it. can I be honest? Yeah, I got a problem with building number seven, man. I'm sorry, I just got a problem. You know, I stayed away from all that. I, I, I re- to, to me, it was more it's about not a good feeling. Yeah, to even think could this have been? But a lot of people starting to think that way, man. Well, you, you know, a lot of firemen died. Yeah. Okay. Do you know why? No. Oh, okay. I know they went in. One, one. There are many reasons. A lot people like Steve Buscemi, who were he used to freaking be a fireman. Just, but, yeah, but here's the thing: they were no like Steve Buscemi could have been in at Pat Mark, right? And he hears about this, and he starts making like I'm not saying that this is what happened, but he wasn't anywhere near it. Drops everything, goes. Just drops anything. Sees a fireman, says, "Hey, man, can I can I, can I catch a ride with you?" A lot of them did that, which I Shemmy did that. I saw with my own eyes. But he did that. He that, hopped. He hopped in the car with a fireman. They went to a firehouse and he borrowed somebody else's suit. And they, and and, and that's and what I say. He actually recover- went down. Was that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Steve Buscemi yeah, yeah, went yeah, down yeah, to yeah. the World he Trade was, Center. He was a really big part of that. 
And um, he doesn't talk about it. He doesn't. No, he did he, what no, he felt he, he had to he do. Didn't, he didn't. That's not you know. It's that's amazing. not why he did it. Um, when that when the, when when the planes hit in the firehouse, that's the switch over. That eight o'clock, nine o'clock period is when is when uh, one shift leaves, another shift comes in. Okay, so now the shift that was leaving, obviously there's a there's a big situation happen at the World Trade. They don't go home, so they take the ride along with the with 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 the, with the shift that's that that's supposed to. Everyone's be just jumping on so that truck. So now you got double. Everyone's jumping that's on why the truck. A lot of these firehouses lost. A lot. 12, 13, 14 firemen each because there would like whole houses were going. It, and that's the stuff that I was uh, yeah, I was always picking John's brain about. I was like, you know, this, this. And he was, and he was willing. And, and, um, and then what I'm more interested in about now is all the effects. Because whether the whether whether they were blown when the, whether they came down or they were knocked down it doesn't change the situation for many of these people no it doesn't you understand to this day i'm worried am i going to die because of cuz i went back to school after everything fell like 2 weeks later we we went back and i remember smelling that smell i'll never forget yeah, as yeah. long as i live and i'm only 3 blocks away brother Right. So everyone that was like on the pile got hit by the dust. A lot of these people already sick and died. I think the lady remember remember the the picture of that lady who was covered all in white. I think it was uh, like Time magazine yeah. or something like that, or or one of the big papers. She just recently died. So what I'm scared about is okay, yeah, Becky, you weren't on the pile. Yeah, you didn't get hit by the cloud, but you were close enough, and you breathed in those fumes for months. Number two, the FDA told us. Was it, no, sorry, EPA, Miss Whitman, if you're out there, God bless you, that the air was safe after that. It wasn't. I let her walk out of my college. I was in the Pace newspaper. I had led the whole college out. I said, "You guys are not. You're not. The air is not safe down here. I know it's not." And sure enough, it's come out that the air was not safe during 9/11 for any of the residents. Now there's the big lawsuit. There's funds for anyone that was even living in the area or worked in the area after 9/11. All eligible for treatment and money and all kinds of stuff. I haven't filed anything. I'm like, so far I'm good, thank God. But it makes me nervous at night, man. But getting back to the firefighters, one thing I do want to say is like, like I said, man, I was on that bridge with thousands of New Yorkers. I remember. I remember the The images. roads were closed. Yeah. The roads were only letting them come both, if, if I'm my memory serving me correctly. Okay. It's crazy how t it's almost 20 years. Both of the, the fire trucks are going in. On police, both both lane, you know, both sides of the Brooklyn Bridge are pointing towards Manhattan. There's no one going the other way. They're both going into Manhattan. Yeah, and we're walking over this bridge. So was the West High, West Side Highway, right? Same I don't know because right? I wasn't there, but yeah. And then you what see happens? Images of that too. I feel yeah. the earth rumble, yeah. and then the first one comes down, and there wasn't a dry eye. I called that the Bridge of Tears, is what I call it in my memory, because the whole bridge started crying. I was crying. One of my boys, a tough guy, once he saw me crying, he started crying. But this woman drops in front of me. I'll never forget it. She was an, of Indian descent, you know, India from Asia, not Native American. And she drops down, and she's like, my husband's in there, my husband's in there. I said, get up. I said, you don't know that. Don't lose hope. Get up. People were getting scared to stampede because we're hearing airplanes, man. We're we don't know what the real story. We don't know if we're being attacked. We don't know. So we're like, damn, we're on this bridge. We're sitting ducks. They're going to hit... People getting scared. They're going to hit the bridge. They're going to. Yeah, because we thought that, it was World War Three, brother. Well, because also at that particular time, they were they were also talking about like uh, other like seven other planes. Remember exactly. We thought it was World War Went III. from eight to seven to six. Then there was one in Pennsylvania, one going to the Pentagon. <clears throat> you know where I ended up that day? Howard Beach. I stayed at the Cross Bay Boulevard Howard Motel. Beach. I walked into Brooklyn. You couldn't get to Jersey. Remember they shut down all the roads, the tunnels, the highways. I had a lot of money on me because it was time for school. So it was like September. Yeah. It was to buy college books, which yeah. I always told my dad, "Yeah, I'm buying books." But I did my thing, man. So yeah, I had a lot of money on me. Love you, dad. And uh, 
I was good. So I paid cash for the room, chilling. About maybe, I think it was four or five days later, I finally made it back to Jersey. My family didn't know if I was okay till later that day, man. Yeah, the phones were down. Dude, they were yeah. so scared that something happened to me because they know I'm a crazy son of. They they think maybe I would have ran into the building help people. They were literally legit thought like they were until they heard they were so scared that something happened to me. But we kind of went off on a tangent there. But yeah, I just wish people would remember these things. And New Yorkers, man, this is the first. I'm what I was trying to say with this whole nine eleven thing is this is the first time in my life that I'm starting to lose hope for New York City. And what I mean by that is I'm feeling something I've never felt before. You know, after 9-11, I felt a resilience. You yeah. know, we're New Yorkers. Yeah, we don't like give rebirth, up. Right? Yeah, yeah, we don't give up. There was like this love, man. There was like this energy, right? You think with this virus, which we should have considered like an enemy. Well, we had that going. But how fast it went the other we way. We had it going with the with the COVID New York strong and, and everything like that because we, we seem to be the only ones who are getting sick at that particular time, right? Back in March and April. And, uh, I mean, you had Louisiana, you had the, a, lot of, a lot of other places, but, I mean, New York was getting hit really, really bad. I mean, 700 people were dying, like, every day. I lost a few people. I know. So have I. I do feel that some of the conditions and the circumstances are a little weird. I won't get into all of that. But what I'm trying to say is and the only part I want to hit on is I feel that there's a really just, you know, and everything that happened after Floyd, and I understand why people got upset, but I just feel like there's such a, there's such a volatile time in American history right now. I've never felt what I'm feeling. I've, I'm sure you feel the same way. There's like this, what happened to us New Yorkers? Like, we, 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 we don't care where you're it's from. It's our we don't taste care. of the 60s. This is what It Arthur, seems like it. I mean, obviously, the, the whole different agenda. Um, but it, the, just the differences of opinion. Um, Arthur, just every, Arthur, everyone uneasy. It's it just feels feels like everyone's walking on eggshells. You know, Arthur Nascarella, you know him well. Yeah, and you guys are both Love on Arthur. both on billions. Yeah, which by the way, I mean, is it not an amazing show that you're not on, bro? I love that show. A lot of good shows out there. I know, but bro, you listen. I'm, I, I ask, call my wife, call my son. I'll give you the number after the show. Say how much TV does Beck Lover watch, bro? Maybe tops. Like I'm not even playing with you. Maybe two hours a week. Maybe there's only certain things that I watch when it comes to television. Shows like that you've been. Well, you on, know what you like. Yeah, they're amazing, man. Maybe I'm typecasted is what I like, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, you guys are on a phenomenal show. I love that show for one reason. I feel like it really gives an authentic look into what it would be like to be a Wall Street tycoon mm. and how money can start corrupting you, plaguing your soul. You know what I mean? Power. And how you make moves. It's not about, see, see this is what people don't understand. It's not about the money. They have money. So now that they got their money, they want the power, and that's where they start seeing. I think this show does a phenomenal job of showing that authentically, mm -hmm. and how government. And so, okay, like I could be a, I can be a, an attorney for the state, and I'm a billionaire, and we go to war, and really, we're not fighting for what's right, because if you look at the show, the uh, and I always get his name wrong, but uh, what an amazing actor he is too. It shows you that these people are like basically using their powers, whether it's for the state or the city or the billionaire with, to go to war with each other for, for their own reasons and their own egos. Are you talking about the Paul Giamatti character? Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal actor, man. Yeah. So now that's a little harder to say. Amazing actor. Paul? So, Paul? Yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul is unbelievable. He's ridiculous. And I mean that in a good way. He's just, wow, this guy, any character he plays, he's yeah. made me cry. He does that, that little thing he does with his eye and the little tear. He, he gets me, the guy. He gets me. Mm-hmm. So they say that that show is loosely based. You ever see a movie he did called uh, American Splendor? No. You should. I don't watch a lot of TV. So I'm, I'm telling you to what to watch. It. All right, we're going to add him to the thing. So you mentioned you, you make a lot of friends in the movies, man. Who would you consider some of your good friends? Is that, can I ask you that? There's a reason I'm asking for my own self. <laughs> you know why right. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I really... I, uh, All right, you don't have to say I want to, like, name right. drop people, You're telling me I, I, I have a few. People that a lot of people know? Yeah. Now, getting back to the Irishman, man. You're doing the scene with Pesci, man. 
guys are first day of work. The guy hasn't come. The guy hasn't. This scene. This scene was my first day at work. What was that like? Um, it took me. <clears throat> it took me um, like ten minutes to uh, put everything to the side. After you're in costume. Yeah. Well, this particular scene, everybody worked in this scene because this. Um, this is the scene where they're giving uh, Frank Sheeran the uh, the Man of the Year award, and Hoffa is presenting the award to him. So you have Hoffa playing, you have De Niro playing, obviously me and Pesci. But at my table, you have Ray Romano, Stephen Graham, uh, Catherine Narducci. Ray did a great job. Three people too, on my table that are, are actual friends of mine. Not only are they colleagues, but they're actual friends. Then, you know, you have Bobby Cannavale, a table over. You got, I got uh, Plemons behind me. I got, you know, uh, Harvey Keitel, a couple of tables over. Everybody played in this scene, and everybody was there because there's a lot of floating cameras. Phenomenal cast, man. I mean, there's no denying it. Yeah. Amazing cast. And so my first day, really didn't get to talk to Joe. I, be perfectly honest, I really didn't get to talk to Marty that much either. You know, I came to work that day at two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. Went you talking about Marty Scorsese, right? Marty Scorsese went straight into hair and makeup, and then um, it's about seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock. They uh, call a blocking. Blocking is when all the actors come, and they, you know, we basically walk walk through the scene and where we're going to be, where the camera's going to be, you know, what works for camera, what doesn't work, what Marty wants, what the, basically it's like a little prep session, right? And, and, and then when you're done with it, that's what you're going to be doing. You got that, you know, where your marks are going to be, you know, where everything's going to be. Uh, it's not so much for tone. It's more for camera. So you're doing that. And then I just had to, I'm not working with one of the guys that I, I, for me, it's always been Joe Pesci. Always. So you're working with someone. People, is it always the, I love De Niro. I love Pacino. But there was always something about Joe Pesci. Sonny, as they call him, no? Al Pacino. Isn't that yeah. his nickname? Uh, I don't know. That's what I heard. Um, I met him. I had the honor yeah. of meeting him. Great guy. Uh, great to be to. on set with. A um, lot of energy. Um, was it the first time you met Pesci? First time I met Pesci, obviously I worked with De Niro before that, twice. And uh, first time working with Marty. Although Marty produced Boardwalk Empire, and he also produced a small independent film that I did called The Wannabe. So I, I, I've kind of been affiliated with him, but never worked with him like this. And uh, Al I never worked with before. And... But Pesci's always been my guy. You know what it means to say, let's say the world ends right now, all hell breaks loose, civil war, Armageddon, whatever you want to call it, to say that at least before this world went down and my life's over, I worked with the best of the best, bro. Do you know why? Because you wanted them, bro. Oh, well, I have a feeling we're going to see some amazing things from you in the future. I appreciate that. And I'm that. calling it here on the show, man. I appreciate that because I I think whatever role you're in, you add that that authenticity to the role, man. I, I'm telling you, but I'm not just saying this because ah, oh, you're cool and you know my family. I've always been a big fan of your work. To me, it's not how big or how small the parts, how you play the part, man. I've, I've been I gotta tell you, man. Uh, even early on in my career, I, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of my uh, some of my icons, like Sidney Lumet. De Niro, Marty, um, actors, uh, you, you know, and I, 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 I've been, I've, I've been fortunate when it comes, when it comes to that. You've been in a lot of mafia roles, a lot of gangster roles, a lot of uh, police roles. More cops. Not You've been a lot of cops monster. too. Well, like you know, crime. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking about crime. like films. Yeah. And, well, and because shows. I play, you know, um, I kind of got. Um, put in the corner of always playing like the heavy what do you think they would cast me for 
if I ever auditioned for anything. Would you I could play a, like a bank clerk. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, uh, Arthur and Deli owner. Arthur said that. that. Arthur, yeah, I forgot what Arthur said about me. Something same, same thing. Like, I like Arthur, I'd be a good like mafia. Like, he's like, not kid. He goes, you'd be a good cop. He goes, like, what do you mean, good cop? He, he always says, kid. It's what he always called me too, kid. And he right. does, and he and he does, and he does Out it. Of uh, love. And yeah, I love. And he's him. seventy-five years old, man. I did a workshop. I hope Arthur, you know. Well, I want to um, get you two together. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to see him again. Um, I'm probably missing a project too that I work with him on. Uh, but I remember him because we we uh, Rebecca Miller, who, who uh, Arthur Miller's da uh, daughter, uh, was doing a workshop. God, this is so long ago. It had to be in the '90s, uh, mid '90s, with Bruce and we. Yeah, Kivo. we you were, know that guy, huh? Bruce Kivo. I think that's his name. No. I think he was like an agent or something, a manager for, for, for actors in New York. I think, if I'm saying it right, I'm not sure. It's, it's a good friend of Arthur's, and I'm going to be meeting him soon. Yeah. You but Arthur, Arthur has always been uh, always a class act, man. Always a class act. He's a act. tough son of a guy. He is. Well, the guy was well, in look, Vietnam. Look, 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 the guy think was about a, when he was a cop. He was a he, was, I don't know if you saw. start, 67, 68? He was in the middle of all this shit. 63? He starts work. The whole entire precinct goes down with Serpico. Wait, wait. When did he come back? When did he, he, when did he get back from Nam? <sighs> Arthur's going to kill me. It's he on my show. Nam. I know he was in Nam. Yeah, he doesn't talk too much about it. I know, I can understand but when why. did he get back? So then he, I, I think he started, um, I think 70s. he started in the, in the police. 70s. Uh, he started like late No, because 68. he mentioned that 68. story. He, he mentioned said 68. that story. 68. 68, 69, yeah, something like that. 21 years, second grade detective. Mm -hmm. He saw the riots. He saw all this shit. So Sorry, this is the only glimmer of hope that I have. Actually, I, I came from Arthur. He said, kid, I've seen New York worse. I go, for real? He goes, worse. Yeah. I said, but did you ever see it empty? <laughs> you never saw it empty. <clears throat> you might have seen the fights and the killing and all that crap. Bullets flying at him. You know what you should watch? You should watch the documentary uh, on CNN. Uh, where they kind of break up the decades, and it was a it was a real eye opener for I've me watched because this. you watched it. Excellent. Do you realize how much violence there was in the sixties and seventies? Yes, and I've heard the stories a lot. And I talked to you about something I wanted to work on, but you said, you know, kid, you you don't got the right idea there. You kind of you kind of shattered my dreams. <laughs> That's the thing. Don't let, don't let anybody step on your dreams. You got a dream. You protect it. You don't let anybody tell you there's something you can't do. That's my Will Smith impression. He's not, you know why I'm not an actor. Will Smith. Pursuit that of happiness. What? Concussion? Pursuit what? of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. Great and movie. That movie, I'm not going to lie, three, Great four movie. times, cried, boogies. What's crazy is my tenant, Sicilian woman, one of the most amazing women in the world. What was the other movie? that? What was it? Seven her pounds? Son, seven pounds? Yeah. Her son worked for the guy that the movie was based on. My six degrees of separation are ridiculous. Bro, through you now, I know Marty Scorsese. I'm, I'm like connected now, bro. This is the six degrees by Kevin Bacon, bro. It's real, man. My six degrees are retarded. You're one person away now from Takashi 69 How do you feel about that? I know his new manager, the one that took him after he did what he did. Yeah, what, 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 uh, you know what? I'm not even informed on that. There's not much to be informed. The guy was an informant. So, I mean, okay, but, well, then I don't need to know anything. But uh, the guy that manages him now, and you know who you are. I'll see you soon. We're going to have a little talk, me and you. It's a guy I used to know. But uh, it's funny when people kind of make don't sound it. too good. It's, it's, not, it's not the best thing. In any event, brother, I could sit here and we could talk for hours about everything you've done, the shows you've been on. I mean, one scene I do want to talk about, yeah. not to get into, I love Entourage, man. Yeah. I really wish they would have kept going uh, with my it. My friends, still my friends today, yeah. Adrian. Talk to him? I talk to Jerry a lot. Jerry's a really good friend of mine. I remember meeting him at the Brigada. I think it was the first season. It had just come mm -hmm. out. I think a lot of the cast was there. I think it was the Brigada grand opening, actually. I think I met Adrian. It was at a club. But, um, man, your character in that, those couple episodes, you were great, man. But you literally walked out butt naked. Yeah. Is that really your butt? 
Or what happened? Yeah. Or is that CGI type shit? <clears throat> no, that's me. Unfortunately. This is the first time you ever um, did a nude scene. There's a whole story to this. And was it uncomfortable? Okay. Okay. I'll break it down to you. So, um, during that time when we shot, when they were shooting that season, I was in Miami shooting Miami Vice that went over three weeks, four weeks over. You're talking about the film? The film. With Colin. Um, With Colin and and Jamie. And Jamie. Great movie. Michael Mann. Yeah. Michael Mann's um, a legend. But when that movie went over... The Wire had started season four. So I was going back and forth to Miami and and Baltimore like every day for like two or three weeks. Then Doug, uh, Doug Allen and uh, Stephen, Stephen Levinson, um, who were the, uh, the creators of the show and uh, and producers and writer um, wrote that character for me. And I knew I knew these guys because I, I I was I was had a little part of what that show was about because I'm 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 I'm, I'm good friends with with uh, Mark and I remember when they were developing this show and at that particular time it was a different show and then they these characters they wind up becoming more like what Doug Ellen's friends would be so I I was there for all that stuff and. So eventually they said, you know, we'll, def- we'll bring you back. And it's great. And they were all great guys. I st- still talk to Doug, Steve. Phenomenal show, man. Great guys. And um, and like, well, can you come and do it? And I'm like, well, if you if you could work it out between, you know, David, David Simon already gave, and Nina Noble already gave me permission to do Miami Vice, which went over. So I didn't know how it was going to go. But whatever was done was done, and I was able to fly out. I didn't look at the script. I'll be honest with you. I didn't read the script. Yo, you killed that role right there. Bro. I didn't read you the script, You came off like though. a nasty, arrogant. Right. So I, I You didn't killed read, I didn't drama read. on it, man. Yeah. You killed drama. Everyone loved drama, man. I um, You abused them. You didn't let them cook breakfast, man. What's abused wrong with you? all of them. And, um, you guys are having fun offset too. Yeah, joking yeah. around. Great. Yeah. Like, were you friends Dolph before the Kevin, show? Were you friends Connelly. before the show? I knew. Yeah, I knew Kevin Con. I knew all of them. So you guys had a good time. The only person I didn't know um, was I didn't know Adrian that well, and I didn't know Kevin Dylan that well. But we we knew each other. But I knew at that particular time Jerry. Um, I didn't. The only I knew Kevin Connolly more than probably anybody else at that particular time. Make a long story short, um, I don't read the script. I I get to the hotel. I'm exhausted. I open up the script. And I, I'm like, "Fuck!" Just like that. I said, "Wow, what what is this?" You know, I I. I Felt that the character, um, he basically like a bull in a china shop. And then the naked part, and I, you know, I, I was. Did you even know you had to do a naked scene? Yeah, I mean, did you, you have know, to, you know? like no? I got myself ready to do something like that, you did know? You to, did you have like, to pick uh, your ass? Or, I mean, what did you do? Yeah, there, it's huh? like I, I just wasn't ready to do something like that. I wasn't prepared, you know? Do they prepare you? I mean, do they whack? I mean. I can't even remember. Do they whack you? I mean, what? Yeah. just go out and that's uh-huh. it. Yeah, just go on. You ad lib the whole thing? No. No, everything was scripted. And uh I remember talking to uh Doug Allen and he's he basically said, Look, I, 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 I just need this character to come in and turn their world upside down because everything is going so well for them. So basically to show the authenticity of who these guys were. From Queens. From Queens, exactly. And and the character didn't really get received that well. You killed it, bro. I, you did. Whether I killed it or not, you I mean, create, people you, did not like him. You, but that was I didn't whole, like him on the page. But that was the whole point. Yeah. You brought that to life, bro. Yeah, I didn't, I, you know. But That's yeah. the point. Anything you're working on that you can tell? I mean, right now, nobody's working, but is there anything that I was, you're I was to- shooting before COVID and, 
before production went down, I was um, shooting billions. I, I got one episode in. They only got up we, to seven, right? Yeah, and they, I think they finished. They 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 were wrapping up episode eight, which I wasn't in. Seven in episode eight, I'm not in. And then my character c- kind of comes back in episode nine, but we, we didn't get a chance to even do a table read on that before they shut everything down. So... Um, you only get introduced to my character in episode six, and then you don't see him in seven. So, I, you know, everything with the business right now is uh, standstill. Don't know what's going on. I guess. And by the way, if nothing new comes out, great. You know, go back and watch these series. All the ones this guy's on, they're phenomenal. If you're bored home right now, yeah. Entourage, The Wire, Boardwalk Empire, Ray Donovan. Uh, what's the other band? There's so many I can't even name them. Yeah, there's been a few. Miss um, Fletcher last year, which I thought was a. a, a, a you also Tom Parada wrote that, and I think Tom Parada is kind of like uh, modern day like Steinbeck. You know, it's like uh, just just a wonderful writer. You know, I did. I worked, worked on some really good projects last year. The Deuce. What advice uh, working you got? with David Simon again? That that was uh, George Pelicanos again. Larry Gilliard. I mean, I mean, it was it was good. It, it felt really uh, fulfilling to work on some of these shows. What advice you got to anybody that's? We all know how hard it is, but what advice you have to somebody? Patience that's, and persistence. That wants to maybe break into the game. Uh, sac- yeah, I mean, you know, you got to know what you want. You got to be able to sacrifice a lot of stuff. You can't, you know, you can't do it because hey, I want to make a lot of money. Because I got to be honest, there's not a lot of money in it. In the beginning, and even when you start working, there's not a lot of money in it. You know, uh, you got to do it because you want to do it. It has to affect you a certain way, you know. Um, Just like I know guys who are bricklayers. It's fulfilling to them because it's like part of it. It's like them doing their artistry, you know. They that challenges every job. You know, I do a chimney this way, I do a fireplace this way, I do a mosaic, I do this, you know. So it's what what it does to you, and you have to be able to do the work. You have to be able to drop things. You have to be able to sacrifice your time with family, sacrifice making a lot of money, you know. Um, you can easily go get that job that gives you six figures, right? I had it. I walked from it. Right. I wasn't happy. You weren't happy. And I know I a lot of people that. in Hollywood who have law degrees, who are in the stock market, who all walked away from all that stuff because they either wanted to be actors or writers because they needed that fulfillment someplace else. And that's that's what it is. It's not a quick fix. It takes it takes a long time. It takes well, a long time. Highlights of my life were starting the show. Yeah. I love it. By the way, I forgot to mention also, I was voted most likely to have his own talk show in high school. When we reach 1 million views, by the way, we just broke 300,000. So you're here. We're celebrating that today. 300,000. Listen, we only started in freaking January, man, during the worst times ever. I'm just a little Beck lover, man. Nobody knows me. With 300,000 people, though. 300,000 views, subscriptions were way ahead of the curve for people that start these types of programs. And I owe it to people like you, man. And I want to thank you, man coming here because it's not just about that you're in movies and shows but i bring people on that inspire and i think what you just shared with the people that listen to this program is important and it's confirming also why i did what i did a year and a half ago i was making well over three hundred thousand dollars i won't say the exact amount i was over that i had a very lucrative career i was a, a sales manager i managed over 40 people and i sold millions and millions and millions of dollars of product and if you look at my Instagram, all those trips, that's how I paid for them. I went anywhere I wanted. I did whatever I wanted. But I was going to the hospital in an ambulance every two, three weeks. I thought I was dying. Heart attack. That's what it felt like. The job was killing me. Literally, my doctor said I was doing MRIs, CAT scans. What do you mean there's nothing? They go, my friend. It's your panic, panic attacks? It was like anxiety, panic, stress. Literally felt like I was dying. You said panic. Huh? Who said panic? You said it first. You didn't even get it. 
I tried to get him on the same. He didn't even get he it. He ripped me. I don't know. I'm too dumb sometimes for some of these jokes. You know what? I walked away from that job. I've never been happy. I don't know man. what movie that is. I think it is. Come oh, on. Oh, that's from Sopranos, man. Nope. No? Well, he had panic attacks. Gangster movie. Eh. Not really. Give me more of the dialogue. Who said panic? Did you hear me say panic? Did I say panic? Damn, I know I've heard this before. Shit. Uh, analyze that. Well, what you should do is you should put this, put this, right. And I think Was it analyze that? this. Analyze yeah. this. You know how yeah. I know that? My cousin's James Beberry. Cousin-ish. Our cousin. cousins are married. Just cuz. Do you know him? Do you know Jimmy? No. You want to talk about, like you said, a guy that never gave up, busted his ass. He can. It's a, works all kinds of jobs. Yeah. Got his big I, break there with. There was a lot of jobs that I did where, you know, I had to. Got his big break. I had to leave. With Analyze That. He played one of the roles there. And then. Was that, the se- that was the second one, right? Yeah. And then what was really nice was when he got the lead bad guy. He happened to play an Albanian mafia. Oh, yeah. With Colin Farrell. Yep. Dead man down. Yep. Now, I could tell if we were hanging out, we'd have a good time. So I want to, I want to, I want you to see if you can make a dream for me come true. Yep. And I'm going to put this out there. I love those guys from that show. I love that fucking show. It's one of the few shows I've watched in my life. And I would watch again. And there's not a damn episode that you can't watch of that show and start at any moment in that show and not enjoy it. Entourage for me. Mm-hmm. If New York, and God willing, I'm going to be positive and say when New York gets back to normal, not the new normal, normal, the way it was. My family owns some of the best restaurants in Manhattan. My best friend's opening one of the best rooftops in the city. It was supposed to open now, but because of the pandemic, there's no reason to open right now and pay $50,000 a month rent, right? Mm -hmm. You can't even even put capacity in there. How are you going to make your money? So they've delayed the opening. I want to round up the entourage. You set it up a boys' weekend. My friends own some of the biggest chains in the city, hotel wise. I'm sure they got places to stay, but if not, I'll set it all up, bro. All right. I want to. I want you guys to have an entourage reunion. We're not going to call it that, but we're going to be like the real life entourage, bro. We're going to have dinner. We're going to go the be best. Honest, that would be really difficult. But if you can make it happen, it'd be amazing. You never know. You never know. You say, guys, I miss you. Life short. The virus, you know. Life Hopefully, short. Yeah, they see this and uh, let's uh, let's do a boys let's do a boys weekend. You know, let's have a little fun, man. Or we'll fly to them. Let's do it. This guy's a kid. He's out of his mind. So the odds are against me. But if it happens, folks, you saw we called it here on the show. Dom, uh, anything else? I mean, so you give up, you sacrifice. Any? What was any secret i mean there is no secret it's hard work but is there any it's just something to give maybe that person out there that's listening to this a hope a little hope to, to pursue a career in the arts or words of wisdom or something that inspires you when times were rough you said you this one phrase would come into your mind or this expression of why you kept pursuing what you did is there anything like a nugget you can give us a little nugget um it's just uh i just had that work ethic you know I, ju- I come from, you know, immigrant family. Uh, my parents came in 1969. I always saw my father work, saw my mother work. Where'd they come from? Italy. What part? Um, Molise. You ever been? Yeah. Do you speak? Yeah, my mother's entire family still lives there. Do you speak there. it? Yeah. And. Um, Parli italiano? Si. Un poco. I've been there, but I love it. Right. Um, but um, I just. I knew that that's what I wanted to do, and and that's what I was going to put all my energy into. I, I mean, I would do jobs where I would be able to walk away from them. Um, I I, ne- I didn't want to get derailed by anything else. Can you tell us some of the jobs you've done so they can understand what oh, you've man, been? I did I, I so waiter. Cars. I was a waiter. I wasn't even a waiter. I wasn't even good enough to be a waiter, to be honest, because I I hated being around people. Um, you've done it all. Odd jobs. Laying blacktop, uh, mixing concrete, working for my uncle's construction company, and 
Just, just every anything time. where I would say, you know what, I got, I got an audition at one o'clock. I gotta go. And they were cool with it. Whether they were cool with it or not, I went. You were willing to walk if you had to. Yeah. All right. And I guess I want to wrap it up with this, because I think we're going to see you again. I hope. Yeah. Um, I always like to inspire people, mm. and that's why it's called the comeback team because we've all been through hard times in our life. I don't know if there's anything you feel comfortable talking about. It's up to you. Is there anything that you've been through that was extremely difficult, whether it was a loss of a loved one or whatever it is, something, a moment in your life where things were just dark, man. You were just like, shit. Life was looking glib, as they say. Do you remember what that was? And what did you, how did you get back up, man? What did you tell yourself? What I'll let you know when it happens because I'm kind of going through it right now. So I'll let you know. All right. So I want to thank you for uh, coming out here. I hope to see you soon yeah we'd love to have you uh it's great being here man and um i really f- like your show um uh, i like the whole premise behind it um did you find it randomly like Google? great energy I, I, i'm hoping that this blows up to be something really big for yourself you know i really appreciate that yeah. man it's words like that and comments from some of the viewers. Even though, listen, I, mean, I, I messed up a lot in the beginning, Dom. I'm not going to lie. Everybody does. I cut people off sometimes. I have a little ADD if you haven't noticed. I'm hyper. I'm excited when you talk. Sometimes I interrupt because my mind's racing. And I don't want to lose what I'm seeing, the questions, where they're going. I want to keep trying to paint this. It's what I do, but I need to control it more. I'm not perfect. I'm in development. I'm reading books. I'm studying. Yeah, I'm not going to do what Gene did. I'm not going to come back and do another half hour just to no, edit just what that you was, did. No, no, that was, yeah, yeah, that was pretty crazy. But And then you cut him off again. When, John, when, when, Gene, guys, when you guys. Seg- when the segment is supposed to be about them finish <laughs> telling, telling their story from the original segment, <laughs> you do it in the other segment. <laughs> But it's, it, you know what it is? It works. I got a it lot works. of. Uh, it works. I got a lot of bad comments, man. If you look at the, and I don't blame him. I swear to God, when I watched, because I had to. At this point, I'm like, okay, everyone's well, saying. you got to live with it because I, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I got from Entourage. Fucking hated you. Yeah, but they hate, but that was the, I would have been like, I guarantee you. you, you go on Doug Ellen's uh, Instagram. I hope Doug is listening to this. Um, oh, we're uh, going to tag him. Uh, tag him. Tag him on We're going to tag, tag him like him a on wall in the Bronx, baby. You go on his Instagram, and if he mentions me, <laughs> or he mentions uh, an episode of Dom or something like that, I can guarantee it. Go through the thread. Go through the comments. <laughs> 85% of the comments would be, what the fuck was he doing on the show? Fucking hate him. Bob, but this, that, that was the point. You right, did it but you so have to well. Understand, you have to understand. Sometimes people can't, don't realize fantasy that and reality. Make believe in that box that they're watching. Oh no! You know how I know that? Just go outside, man. Right. Yeah. We're not going to get into that but, either. You know, we're not going to get into the master. True, but you, you know, <laughs> there's a flip side to that because those are true fans of the show, and these guys work so well together that. People loved them and did not want to see anything happen to them. They didn't want to see that be dis- disruptive. So um, I, I get that. They didn't I want your it. ass on the show, literally and physically. They didn't like anything. <laughs> so, but I play a lot of those characters. You know, the same thing with the her character and yes, the wire. I, I I just I got this feeling, bro. I'm calling it here on the show, man. God knows the future. God knows everything. I don't know nothing, but. I got this feeling, man, we're going to see something from you in the future that's just going to blow everyone away, bro. I know it's coming, bro. You know why? Because you put the damn work in, bro. You got the talent. I'll keep walking the path, man. And that's I know it's coming, bro. Dude, you're phenomenal. And besides, all these guys, they're not going to live forever. I appreciate it. I'm hoping, you know, one day, and I love Al Pacino, but one day he will go to the other side, and I do have a... I look like in uh, Carlito's way. I look like Al Pacino on crack. Not on crack. From the Bronx. Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Sound horrible, right? You got that voice, man. Let me tell you something. A lot of people like from other countries, I love that New York accent. I mean, I don't yeah. think I have an authentic New York, New Jersey accent. I think you can hear it. But I hear more from people, where are you from? 
Like meaning Are you from America Like they don't think I'm even Like English was my first language My mom If you heard her She sounds perfect My mom works for the biggest Publishing company in the world Okay She does account She sends Stephen King his check Literally Wow she speak, and she grew up in the Bronx, my mother. She grew up on Jerome Avenue, King's Bay. Yeah, Jerome, yeah. Okay, right next to Monroe. I know where it is. Gyro King, man. Yeah, play baseball there. It's the best gyro in the world, yeah. bro. Is it not? Tell me you eat gyros, man. Gyros. Yeah, you know what you could play? You could play like uh, Hit I mean, They did like a period piece, like a KGB Russian. <laughs> I think I could play like Brad Pitt, like yeah, two okay. bitches, two beautiful women. Yeah, making out same time. Hey, it's good to have these dreams, man. No, I'm saying that's the role I should be cast for. Fat rich guy. I would do it in a heartbeat. You stretch. I always said if you back if you ever made it as an actor, which I'm not, but like if I ever had like first of all, they would never cast me for like a love scene. I got more stretch marks. I look like I've been stabbed by a gang 150 times and survived. That's how I'm gonna take my shirt off at the beach. I don't know how my wife she's not embarrassed to go to the beach with me, man. It looks like I got jumped. Right, how how big were you? It wasn't, I've always had them, but when I got big, they be, I had them because I shot up fast. Stretch marks. Right. But as I got fat, they expanded and they became like purple. When you say you got big, were you in I'm shape big? 300 pounds right now, bro. 320. Yeah. I should be 230. Well, you have so much time to like walk around the block like a thousand times. I'm thinking about keeping the reserves on just in case there's shortages. Nah, nah. You, you got to get out there. You got to. You know, you got to do something for yourself. I take off my you shirt. You got the time right now. Ah, what did we do yesterday? We walked for an hour and a half. I started, man. I'm on no carbs right now. <laughs> I have no carbs. Okay. I started, man. Good. That's why you don't see me. This would have been gone already. Good. Yeah, those should not even be But I'm telling you, around. I take my shirt off. I look like I got stabbed by like Lion Kings and survived. That's what I look like. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. There is nowhere to go. Yeah. I, no, I'm not showing you guys. I know you want me to show you on camera. It's not happening. You don't want to come to paparazzi one day. They'll do it for you. Don't worry. TMZ. Hang around with this guy enough. You eat meat or no? You a steak guy? Yeah. Can we give a shout out to Ben and Jack Steakhouse and Benjamin Steakhouse, man? Absolutely. You go up to the one up in Westchester? Uh, I've been there. Yeah. Phenomenal. You want to talk about a story of success? That one, Z Prime. Phenomenal. Yeah. Z Prime too. Excellent. Z Prime. Yeah. I haven't been there Zeph. yet, though. Shout out to my boy Zeph. Let's go. Yep. Let's set it up one night. Doug pays. Doug, Dougie. Shout out to Doug, Big Kenny, Beck, L. Beautiful. You Those are good are. people right there. I know them for a long time. And uh, were you friends with Eric Nies? Call them too? friends. Are you friends with Eric Nies? Who? Did you ever meet Eric through Beck? No. Great guy, man. Yeah. First reality television uh, startup. He was back, on the grind. Back him, um, yeah. Oh, all those guys. I always when Dougie, I Mike, when I Lodges for a long time. Put them great people, beautiful family. I when beautiful I uh, when I uh, when I'm around Beck, I, you know, I call him Senior because we got the same name, and I'm yeah. Junior. Similar, but I mean, I'm a door opener, but that guy's like a door opener. He's a can opener. Like he knows everybody, man. It's amazing how many yeah. people that guy met. He's like, oh, I, I gotta let you go. I'm, uh, I gotta FaceTime with Alec Baldwin. I'm like, thanks, bro. Yeah, thanks, Billy cause. Baldwin. Billy, Billy. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I can't keep track of how many famous friends he has, man. Yeah. I always said, I mean, I wish I told him, I said, please, I said, come do the show with me. We'll call it Beck and Beck. We'll take over the world, bro. B and B. With your connections? Beck and Beck. Yeah. But that's the kind of guy, man. He don't care to be in the public eye. He lives his life, he's happy with it, and he minds his own business and he don't give a shit. Yeah. Some you know, something about being content. Folks. I have someone I've always wanted to meet, Dominic Lombardozzi. Lombardozzi, yeah. Lombardozzi, really. Just testing to see if you're listening to me. The guy is even better than I thought he'd be in real life. He's a real one. He's done amazing work. Check out all of his work. Check out the shows he's been on. Type in the last name. Check him out on Entourage. It'll blow your mind. I think he played that role phenomenal. Let me know in the comments what you thought about how he performed. If you type in his name and last name and you go look at that scene, I promise you, you're going to understand what we were talking about. You're going to understand what I'm talking about. You did a phenomenal job. Comments. Phenomenal job. You know, I didn't even read the comments. You should. You want me to read it? <laughs> no, not, not with me around. No, but I, hey, look, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to finally meet you. Um, and um, 
I'll I'll come back anytime you want, man. But uh, but I'd like to what get you're you doing on, here is is awesome. I'd like to get you and Arthur together. Let me know then when Arthur's gonna, available. If I'm available, I'll be here. We should go. So you know he's like right here. We should, we should I should just call him downstairs to his lobby. I'll probably shoot you at the door. Nah, he'll laugh, man. He'll laugh when he sees you. He'll die laughing. But if oh, I you do see. speak to him. Give him my love. Definitely will. Yeah. With that said, folks, no matter all right what you've been through in life, no matter how dark it gets, as long as you still have air in those lungs, you can always make a comeback. Thank God, finally someone got. That's how you know this is a professional actor. Every time I guess they come on the comeback team, they can never. I gotta remind them of what, and they go to the comeback. He does it on the first cue. This guy's a one take guy, man. Till the next time, we're here with Dominic. Follow him on Instagram. We'll put up your Instagram so they can follow you. And Twitter. Yeah. And your Twitter. We'll have it all up on the thing. And again, folks, remember you can always make a comeback. Keep watching, subscribe, share. It's through you that we survive. We love you. Thank you. Stay strong, America. Love it.